everybody. Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the DRF Bets race of the day for Sunday, July the 14th, race number eight at Woodbine. It's the grade three vigil stakes. We are going six furlongs on the tapita surface. It is a race you can play with a DRF Bets account. Sign up, learn how to access those $150 in risk-free wagers. Let's meet the field for the 2019 edition of The Vigil. You can download free formulator past performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post-position order, and we will begin with a monster. The number one Pink Lloyd has been uh, the king of the sprinters in Canada for as long as I can remember. He's won 18 of 23. And Matt, I had to be honest. I got to be honest with you. Towards the end of 2018, I was getting a little worried about Pink Lloyd. He dropped a couple in a row. I thought maybe Father Time was catching up with him. I guess all he needed was a rest because he has come back hitting hard in 2019. Yeah, and I think you have to give Robert Tiller a tip of the cap because, like you said, I, I was with you. I thought we were starting to see him lose that fastball, and and you know what, I, you couldn't hold it against him because he's six years old at that point. Instead, they put him away for a number of months. They bring him back here as a seven-year-old, and I don't want to say he's quite as good as new, but he's still pretty darn good. And, and to me, the race just goes through him strictly. I mean, it's an instance where he has a little bit of versatility. If for some reason, it's a very slow pace. He can be forwardly placed. If they do heat it up early on, he can sit and come with a run. You brought up the overall record. I mean, look at the record at three quarters of a mile. He's 14 for 15, and the only loss, he finished second. It's just very hard to get around a horse like this. I initially wanted to get cute. Maybe take a shot against him. I, I don't. I, upon further review, don't really have any interest in doing that. On a recent edition of Out of the Gate, we'll get Out of the Gate back into the rotation once we actually get back into a studio. <laughs> I made Dixie's Gamble a horse to watch, and maybe I made a bit of a foolish statement saying, "Well, Pink Lloyd can't be the king of the hill forever." Dixie Gamble has one race that's fast enough. It was the last race in 97 buyer. I can understand anybody that questions that fig and say he's never done it before. Maybe he'll never do it again. He just won that race so easily. He broke inward. He tracked the pace inside. He came out under confident handling, and he blew him away in the lane. He's five for seven lifetime. All his sprints are good. I love this Josie Carroll formulator fact for Dixie's Gamble. Past five years, horses aged three and up, last out winners on synthetic going third off the layoff six for 11 eight of 11 on the board three dollars 60 cent roi now dixie's gamble might have to come from a little bit farther out of it against tougher horses but i think maybe now's the time to catch an aging pink lloyd and you know the, the thing for me with dixie's gamble it's not so much that that i want him to prove it although you bring it up i mean it is sort of a, a figure that's kind of out of nowhere it's considerably the fastest he's ever run the big thing for me is, do I want to take him as the second choice, as the second shortest price in this race? Because I think he's going to be a pretty clear second choice in here in that three to one range. I suppose, again, if you really believe that Pink Lloyd is vulnerable and you think that this is the time to strike, then maybe you can make the argument that eight dollars is something that you want to take on him. I wouldn't talk you off of it. For me, it's just an instance where combining the idea that that's the only race that he has that's fast enough to run with the big boy and at the price that he's likely to offer. That's the only reason that I won't be using this horse. Consistency, thy name is Martin Lake, the number three. 21 out of 45 in the exacta with 11 wins. And let's go over his recent form. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine in a row, either first or second. And he made Pink Floyd work a little bit in that Greenwood, his first start off a six-month layoff. And then he came back and ran just fine again. This is a horse that if you make a mistake against a horse like Martin Lake, he'll make you pay but he's got to beat Pink Lloyd, Never, always a daunting task, and he's also got the upwardly mobile Dixie's Gamble. Another minor award? It's kind of how I'm looking at it. I mean, this is a horse that he's run 45 times, a best figure of 93. He's rock solid. I'm not going to sit here and, and make any real case against this horse. He's really nice, but from a win standpoint, I think he would need a number of things to go his way in order to win here. Wyatt's Town, the number four, goes out for high percentage trainer Norm McKnight, and he is likely to make the lead. As we see from the Timeform U.S. pace projector, it is also a blue bar scenario. In Timeform U.S. parlance, that means that race favors horses on or close to the pace. That's where Wyatt Town can be. He won two stakes races for three year olds in gate to wire fashion over this surface and uh, distance last year, and maybe last time out was just a little bit of a tune-up. Pink Lloyd handled him in the Cartier, but he had to go fast that day. 
Yeah, and the other thing with that most recent run that I'll forgive him, they took the blinkers off. The blinkers go back on for this race on Sunday. Maybe that gets him sharpened up again. Look, you brought it up. That run, two starts back in the Jacques Cartier. He was forward to play, setting hot fractions, and he couldn't hang on. The problem is I, I think that's the only way he can potentially win this race is to just go out there and just try to bottom the field out. I don't know if he's going to have the stamina necessary for that. And for me, he's nothing more than a pace factor early on. The five is Eskiminsen coming off an open links win on turf. And I guess that's where he's found his footing recently. He was a stakes winner over the synthetic as a two-year-old, but he was 21 to one last time out. Pink Lloyd's handled him a couple of times. And I'm not sure he's the best closer in this race. No, I, I agree with that. And it's just one of those things where, look, he's been handled by a number of common opponents, not just Pink Lloyd. He's run into a number of these common foes, and they've all just seemed to be better than him. With that deep closing running style, he needs to have everything break his way. And you brought it up. He might not even be the best closer in the race. We saw the pace projector, and we saw that there's not expected to be much in the way of speed. Enter Circle of Friends, who is Pink Lloyd's uncoupled stablemate. And he's a talented sprinter in his own right. It's just a shame he runs against Pink Lloyd, it seems, every week. He's not as good as that one. But what he does bring to the party is a little bit of speed. And I wonder if his job in this race is to kind of soften up the other paces uh, and set this thing up for the big boy. I was going to say, at this point in his career, it feels like he's very honest. But when he when he's tested a little bit, I don't know that he's quite as good as a Pink Lloyd. And look, not many people are. Not many horses are as good as Pink Lloyd. But if he's going to be forwardly placed, that could be the situation where any of those other speeds in a race that potentially lacks early foot, maybe his job is to just ensure that there's something there, take a little of the starch out of the opponents, and set it up for the big guy. Sable Islands won two out of his last three races. The only loss came off the layoff to Pink Lloyd, so maybe he has a little bit of an excuse. He has a really nice outside post position and good tactical speed. Timeform US has him sitting second. I wouldn't be surprised if he's sitting third. I think we're kind of splitting hairs there. What I do know is he'll probably be in with a chance turning into the stretch at a price, getting a jump on the main competition. And that last buyer, not too far off, the recent figs earned by the two morning line favorites. He He's the one that if I was going to take a shot against Pink Lloyd, it'd be with Sable Island for the reasons you brought up. You're going to be taking up that two or three wide stalking trip on the outside. If you think that the paces are a little bit suspect or maybe the distance or a confluence of things will go against them, Sable Island could get the jump on a horse like Pink Lloyd. I don't think he's as good as Pink Lloyd, but again, if I was trying to get cute and pick against him, I'd go with Sable Island. Let's take a look at our top selections for this race of the day for Sunday, the grade three vigil. I'll take a chance. Listen, I touted the source out of the gate. I'm going to stick with Dixie's gamble. Maybe he still has some upside. This is only going to be his eighth lifetime start. I'm curious to see how good he is. I got to use Pink Lloyd as well because this race kicks off a 20 cent pick four. For me, it is two one seven. Matt, you're not trying to beat Pink Lloyd. No, and it really it is. It just boils down to if there was someone else I was really, really intrigued with, maybe I'd be inclined to take a chance against him. I just think that the old boy still has something left in the tank, and he could work out another decent trip in this spot. I went one, seven, three, and two. Good card at Woodbine on Sunday. Get involved with that DRF Bets account. Sign up. Access $150 in risk-free wagers. Approximate post time for Pink Lloyd in the vigil, 455 Eastern. Best of luck.